Hello again. Uh, so I'm gonna do a quick video, and I'm gonna do try to do a, a number of these um, because I'm not really editing these videos. They're just kind of one take. Um, you know, I, I don't want to bore you with 20 minutes of just watching me draw. So a lot of my drawing here that I'm working on today, um, I'll do outside the video. I'll do on my own time, and then I'll check in with you. But I wanted to, so Natalie, if you could come a little bit closer to um, right in this area here. And now we can, we can, um, we can choose to, to develop the whole drawing kind of collectively or at the same time. In other words, like turn up the focus in the drawing um, throughout the whole drawing and let the drawing finish kind of all at once. Some people do that. That's usually how I draw. But what you might want to try is, is maybe pick an object or pick an area in your drawing that you want to go ahead and focus on. You know, like if you can draw a coffee cup really well and you're thinking to yourself, wow, that really looks like the coffee cup, then that's a great kind of, um, you know, standard that you've set for yourself. And then you can try to bring up the rest of the drawing to that level. So what I'm doing right here, and I've only spent a little bit of time here, but I'm working in this uh, coffee cup up on the lip right here. And I just want to give you just a, a quick um, kind of thought or a way of thinking as you're moving forward in your drawing here. So first of all, I'm looking at my photograph. Yours is probably on your phone or on your iPad, and you can go ahead and pinch up and blow it up whenever you need to. But again, for me, I, I might take my magnifying glass and look carefully at something so that I can render it exactly the way that I see it. So the way that I want us to be thinking as we're moving forward here is we are, we are looking at every square centimeter of this coffee cup in the photograph. And then what we're trying to do is we're trying to emulate that in the drawing that we do. So as we structure out our drawing like I did here, and we're pretty happy with the placement and proportion and things look pretty good, um, almost immediately you can start to kind of render and start to make it more lifelike or more natural looking. Now when you do that, one of the main issues I would say in the past 25 years of teaching drawing in this type of drawing is when students um, lose track of their value scale. And where that becomes very important is, is and, and I think probably the best way to deal with it is, is to identify where your blacks are and identify where your whites are. So in other words, if I have a white here, like on this tablecloth, then I know that this coffee cup is that much darker compared to white. What a lot of people do is they'll go on the highlights on the coffee cup right here and they'll make those white. Well, you have to ask yourself, how could these be white if this is white? Okay, so only this can be white. This is light, but it's not white. You can see here on the handle of the coffee cup, it probably almost does get white. So I will make that white. That's a reflection off the outside. When we get into our wine bottle here, okay, even though there are these light um, reflections and lights coming through onto the glass, really none of them are pure white. Even the white label right there isn't as white as my white tablecloth right there. The same is true for blacks, okay? If I identify, let's say, my background here or the deepest, darkest part of the avocado, or maybe even inside my coffee cup gets awfully dark, maybe not quite black, but it gets pretty dark, if I identify those as black, then I can't make other parts of my drawing black, okay? So for example, the shadows that are in this coffee cup right here, I can't tell you how many students will make that black, okay? It can't be black if this is black, kind of to think of it that way. So as I'm making my way through my drawing, first of all, I've got my, um, my photograph right here and I'm looking very carefully at it. Every move I make on my drawing comes from my photograph or my still life or the picture on your phone. So you find yourself sometimes in kind of tough spots, okay? Like, how do I know what the gray is right here? Especially me, I'm working from a, a color photograph. I should have printed it in black and white, and of course I didn't. But right here, what is this relative to what, white or black? 
So I've got my black right here. So I can start to compare my black here with the grays that I'm creating right here. For example, I've got to make a shadow, okay, along the lip of the coffee cup right here, okay, and I can use a little line to kind of delineate that. And I can come in and I can use my vine charcoal to kind of draw that. Now once I get it in place, that's where I want my shadow, but I don't want it that dark. So I might take my finger or an eraser and just kind of knock it back a little bit. That way I was able to draw it out, but I didn't make it um, too dark. Because if I make it too dark, then my other lights and darks will not function properly. I can come over like this area right here. I want to have it just a little bit darker than I've made it. So I'm going to come over just gently with a little bit of uh, charcoal and just kind of knock in a little charcoal. Scratch it in there a little bit. Okay, take my finger, and that vine charcoal is very, very delicate, so you barely rub it off with your finger, and it disappears, okay? Then I can even come in back with my eraser and just kind of bring in a little bit of that reflected light hitting the back edge of that coffee cup right there, okay? Um, I Like, as I said, I'm making a dark background, so I can add my, my black background here just to kind of create that effect, that contrast that I'm wanting, and I can fill all the rest of that in later. My coffee cup, I gotta be careful because my coffee cup kind of comes down like this. Again, it's not white. And even if at first you make it white or overly light just to kind of draw it out like I'm doing here, that's fine. So I wanna get this highlight in there, make sure that it's in there. Now, I might just kind of knock it back a little bit. Okay, so I'm using that pencil eraser as a drawing tool, okay? Fill in my black background a little bit, and I'm starting to get that kind of pop that I'm looking for in the whole drawing, not just in this area right here. So what I'm gonna do um, tonight and a little bit of tomorrow is, is I'm gonna get in here and uh, make sure that I render out my uh, coffee cup and maybe pick a couple, of, couple other objects, get them rendered out, and um, have them ready for my next video and talk a little bit more about creating textures and again moving into that more kind of almost photographic or photorealist look that I need to have in here to get this thing to really jump off the page. So just a quick video to just kind of get your mind around um, how you're going to render these things out. Get the things structured out and drawn out to where you're happy with what you've got and then you're going to just buckle down and render each object as best you can and try to get it as close to the photograph as you possibly can, okay? So again, you can already see that um, looking in the drawing just after a short period of time, we can start to see that I've spent more time in this area here versus everywhere else. And my goal then is to work on that a little bit more and then make my way through the whole drawing and get all of this rendered to where it looks very much like a black and white photograph. So thanks for now and I will um, be talking to you shortly.